Hello, this is Sandra Brown of Happiness Past 60. Well, we're in a new year. And I think I'm just going to share about fears that come upon me. You know, everybody thinks, you know, I've got it all together. I don't know that any of us have it all together and I'm never sad or I'm never fearful, but I have this occasionally. I haven't had it much lately, but I call them uh, night terrors in a way because you'll wake up and usually it's about three o'clock in the morning for me. And let me know if you have something like this, but maybe about three in the morning, something will wake me up and I start thinking. Mm, it's not always good. And then you start thinking about the future. And way far in the future. Now it's good to plan. Everyone needs to plan. But we need to plan and then forget it. Because here's what happened to me and how it's like, I feel like sometimes it's just, I don't know if it's Satan or it's just my mind or a little both. But I, it'll just start out with something now. Okay, here's how it happened. <laughs> so about three o'clock in the morning, uh, Mr. Bill, my husband, he, he's been dealing with uh, bronchitis. He's kind of at the end of it. But now we've found out that he has uh, emphysema. And um, he was a fireman and he uh, smoked for many years too. So he realizes it's his own fault if he has emphysema. But we do things and um, we'll get into that a little later. And But that doesn't make any difference. You know, God will still heal you. He forgives you and he'll heal you. But we'll go back to that. But I, so I, about three in the morning, he's coughing. And he he needs to just get up out of bed and go cough it up, you know. Well, that woke me up. And we had had a couple spells with him with his diabetes where his blood sugar got low. And I he usually knows when his blood sugar is low. He feels it coming on and he'll take a uh, sugar tap. Well, this time he was before this three o'clock in the morning thing happened when I'm going back this time he we were in the living room and he, he's like put his head in his hands and like I don't know something's wrong with me well then of course I'm going is it your chest because I know he has AFib <laughs> we're going through all those things it could be is it, it what do you mean how are you feeling I don't know I don't know how question him and he's just you should you know think well I says is it your blood sugar is your blood sugar low you want me to go get your sugar tap I don't know and just looking strange in his eyes and stuff and I'm thinking wow well, usually he knows this of his blood sugar you know you're like what should I do and so it ended up I go I'm just gonna take a chance and go get a blood at the sugar tab. So I went into the other one. I go, stay here and don't get up. And I went in and I got him a sugar tab, making it a long story because it was longer than that. And he snapped right out of it. But then at three o'clock in the morning, this was a couple of days, two, two or three days ago, about three o'clock in the morning, he started it again. And he was even down on his knees by the bed and just, you know, looking off talking kind of strange. So I went in and did it again, got the sugar tab and it snapped him out of it again. But I know that they can go into a, a coma and you're like, I, I mean, before we went to bed, I had the phone in my hand ready to dial 911. And my last resort was to go get that sugar tab. If that didn't do it, I was calling. Anyways, because of that happening, 
and then finding out he has emphysema. Naturally, I had just taken care of my husband, deceased husband, not that long ago with Alzheimer's. And um, yeah, I was a caregiver all that time. And I'm thinking, oh, here I go again. We haven't even had time to have to travel or to do anything together. And uh, of course, I'll do it. I'll take care of him because I love him. And he took care of me when I had, we just got married and I had a heart attack and this, and uh, the carotid artery operation too. <laughs> but I've snapped out of that now and now, now it's been him. But you know what? Well, we'll go on with this. So here's the thoughts that was going through my head. I don't want to make this a long one. Some of you like it when I have long videos and some of you don't. So, you know, you let me know on that. I'll try to do some shorter ones and some longer ones. Uh, put my glasses on a second. I made some quick notes, so I'll remember. Okay, so my, one of my thoughts was, oh no, if he gets ill, and you know my fear about driving other than, I've learned my little close places, like I can go to the store, grocery store, and I can go to the dollar store by myself, and I can go to Stonehenge restaurant by myself, you know, a few things like that. But I don't like, driving by myself any further. And, you know, it's a strange area for me. I was never good even when I was living in Indiana, but at least everything was familiar. But things are getting much more familiar for me here. So I was thinking about that. And then I was thinking, oh, what if he dies? You know, I've already lived through a divorce after 20 years of marriage. I've lived through being a widow after 40 years of marriage and going into Alzheimer's and a lot of other things that are unmentionable that I went through. But, but I'm thinking all this, like, what if he dies? Then I go into my planning mode, <laughs> my planning mode. Should I stay in Tennessee? I love Tennessee. I really do. And I've made a lot of new friends, but I have no family here. And the only, you know, sibling I have left, left is my sister. And if you remember, she moved to Florida, and that's where we were going to go. And then, then I decided to stay here in Tennessee. But Florida is hot. Um, there's a lot of traffic that I don't have here in Tennessee. And then I would have to start all over with making friends. And... Uh, you know, now I'm 81. So all of that is not easy. Then I was thinking, well, maybe I'll move back to Indiana. But I'm thinking, oh, it's so cold. I mean, we have cold weather here, but not like in Indiana. We don't have the snow here and stuff. I So far, I haven't even seen a snowflake. And it's this is, what, January 5th? Yeah. And... Um, then I'm thinking, all my friends back in Indiana, they're, they're aging, and some of them have been passing away, and, but I'm aging too, you know? And I was thinking the taxes are high back there. But, and then my sister Debbie's not there. It's even farther away. So, I don't know. All this was going through my mind. You know, and it's just like this horrible movie. Like, oh, my grandchildren, I have six, well, seven grandchildren, and they're scattered all over the place. They've got their own lives. And, you know, in the ideal world, I would be married to the father of my children. My husband, my, he, he's passed away now. We divorced, but he's passed away now. My son wouldn't have passed away. I lost him when he was 40 years old of uh, brain cancer. My daughter has some medical problems where she doesn't leave the house. And uh, I, I, I just, in the ideal world, that wouldn't be, right? But this is not the ideal world. This is not heaven. 
So now I got to deal with this and I have to make decisions. But guess what? I don't have to make all the future plans because I don't even know what's going to happen in the future. I have no idea, but God knows. God knows. So it just, that scripture came to my mind. Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. You know, the Bible says it over and over. Don't worry, don't worry, don't be fearful. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. When we get there tomorrow, we can worry about it. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Boy, isn't that the truth? So I decided, okay, Sandy, buck up here. Let's just be concerned about today. Let's just take care of this wonderful husband God's given you. And we, we've got a good marriage. Just take care of him now. He'll take care of you. And just take each day as it comes. So today, we got up and we did some, he taught me some stretches that he had learned when he used to be a, a runner. And he said it was a professional runner taught him the, the stretching exercises. So we did those this morning. I was in my pajamas. <laughs> and uh, it was funny because he was going to get down the floor to do some of my goal. Well, my exercise is probably going to be getting you off the floor. <laughs> but he got up okay. And... Uh, we both felt better that we did it. And we're going, our goal is to try to do that every day. It's only about 10 minutes. And uh, we got invited uh, this evening to go across the street with a neighbor. And we're going to have game night over there with some of the other neighbors. That would be so much fun. So this is today, right? I'm doing a video today. Took a shower, washed my hair. That's what he's doing now. And the sun's out. It's in the... Uh, lower 30s here, but it's another day. And I can't bring all of tomorrow, which I don't even know what's going to happen. I can't bring all of that into one day or one night at morning, 3 a.m., <laughs> and solve everything. I can't do it because I don't even know what's going to happen. So, what, like they said, there's enough trouble in one day. We're not made to take it all on. And here's the next one. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Ooh. Plans to give you hope and a future. I just think that's so good. Let's just rest in that, guys. This, this is what we need to do. We need to go to the scripture and find comfort and help there. So we know now not to worry. Just take each day at a time. I, mean, I know we have to make some plans that we can, but after we've done that, just let it go. And we're not going to be worrying about it every day. And we must know that God has good plans for our life and they're Plans for us to prosper and not to harm us. All right, I better. Okay, but I, I've been on here almost 14 minutes now. I want to have time to do this. Oh, I've got, this is the new one that he bought me. This is, isn't this, I love the covers. And you know, I guess we've lost Sarah Young who did these. But you know what? That She's in heaven. She wouldn't come back here for nothing. She's in a good place. And uh, it's called, it's Jesus Calling, Enjoying Peace in His Presence by Sarah Young. I like the cover of this. It's kind of like leather. Looks like leather. Okay, for January 5th. Oh, and I'll put, uh, I'll look it up and I'll put a link for this in my description down below. Where, uh, actually, where it says more, click on that. It'll be in there. You can achieve the victorious life through living in deep dependence on me. This is what the Lord's saying. People usually associate victory with success, not falling or stumbling, not making mistakes. But those who are successful in their own strength 
tend to go their own way, forgetting about me. It is through problems and failure, weakness and neediness that you learn to rely on me. True dependence is not simply asking me to bless what you have decided to do. It is coming to me with an open mind and heart, inviting me to plant my desires within you. I may infuse within you a dream that seems far beyond your reach. You know that in yourself you cannot achieve such a goal. Thus, begin your journey of profound reliance on me. It is a faith walk taken one step at a time, leaning on me as much as you need. This is not a path of continual success, but of multiple failures. However, each failure is followed by growth spurt, nourished by increased reliance on me. Enjoy the blessedness of a victorious life through depending your dependence on me. Oh, I'm sorry. Through, <laughs> let me read that again. Enjoy the blessedness of a victorious life through deepening your dependence on me. And Psalms 34, 17. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. From all their troubles. Woo. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And he saves those that are crushed in spirit. Again, that's Psalms 34, 17. Isn't that nice to know? That if you're brokenhearted and crushed in spirit, that the Lord's close to you then. And 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. I have to give you that blessing at the end. This is the high priest prayer in number 624. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In Jesus name, I love you. Bye guys. God bless you. Oh, be sure to uh, subscribe, like, and share. I would appreciate that so much. And then you won't miss anything. It doesn't cost anything at all. Never will. And that way you won't miss any, any of my videos. Okay, bye-bye now.